Okay, here we go, Doodle Doo. I told you it was called Doodle Doo. I bought this in Anthropology in Las Vegas last year. I was very disappointed in Las Vegas in terms of shopping. I don't gamble and I don't drink, so why did I go to Vegas? My husband wanted to go and I love America and I love shopping in America, not in terms of shoes and clothes and handbags, but in terms of the cloth they have, the threads they have, the art supplies they have, the craft supplies they have, um, I could, and books, I absolutely love books and proper books, you know, non-fiction books, reference books, but I also love artist books and sketchbooks and things like that and believe me, if you don't want clothes or shoes or designer handbags, Vegas isn't the place to be. It was absolutely, I bought so little, I mean I had so much money left when I came home because I couldn't find anything to buy and then one day it was like heaven, it was like my birthday, I found an anthropology and the Americans among you will know how beautiful a store that is. Um, anybody else, they do have them in England, they have one in London now, maybe two. Um, but I, I was aware of them from online and then the first time I actually went in one was when I went to San Francisco and I was so happy to buy to find anthropology so I bought in there some china and books because they do have beautiful books. I bought um, illustrated with embroidery books of the secret garden for my daughter and for myself. I bought another sketchbook come journal come ledger that um, I can't put my hands on at the minute and I bought doodle doo. And I don't know why I bought this. I perhaps thought I could colour it in because I do like colouring and it's very therapeutic. But then the other day I'm trying to work on something at the moment that requires a lot of investigation and work that needs a, a, a store in place. And I was just looking through this because I like it so much and I have it to hand. And I thought, oh yeah, that'd be great putting my samples in and my information and my pictures and my sketches and stuff. So, but really it's in its very early stages. But you've seen pictures of it before. But I've been collecting images and adding things to it. So this, if you look at it, it's about function and utility and minimalism because the artists I'm looking at at the moment, there's two artists I'm looking at who are inspiring what I'm doing. One of them is Maxine Bristol. She's a British woman, an English woman. She works at a university in Chester. And look her up. Her work is amazing. But it's all about function and utility. And she describes herself as having an, an inherited love of stitch. And I can relate to that, I can empathise with that. So this is a couple of images of her work. Um, I'm not going to make it about, I'm not going to make it a video about Maxine Bristol. Look her up if you want to know. Okay, some good images of her. So I did this over here. These are the little ones on card. Very basic stitches laid out in utilitarian form. And then this is more of Maxine Bristol's work. So this, all this is informing what I'm doing, all these images. I'm not copying it. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking that's utility, it's function, it's minimalist, it's linear, it's regulated, it's monotonous, you know, it's um, the tediousness of lots of hand stitching in a row in a straight line. So that's what I'm getting from that. I'm not copying it in any way, shape or form. And then I did these little samples on silk tusser. And then I've also done a little bit of drawing. And this drawing is from Maxine Bristol, but then I also did, there's nothing on this side, so I can move it over. So these are, I withdrew threads. That's just a piece of cloth where the threads are withdrawn. There's nothing happened on there. There's pictures of these on the last two posts in, on my blog, if you want to look at them closer. That's just a little bit of wrapping without withdrawing threads. And that is wrapping on withdrawn threads. Okay, that piece. Um, and I know Diana, spied that yesterday in yesterday's post but there's actually quite clear images of that in the post the day before and then this is my drawing um, and at the moment these are just pinned in with paper clips okay um because i'm not certain that they're going to stay like i've got them so this is just basic pencil sketches looking at the forms of maxine bristol and looking at my love of pockets here we go there's a pocket here and um, kind of with surfaces um bringing in the utility and the tedious and the monotonous and the simple and the linear into that. So that's what that drawing's all about. And then over the page, <coughs> I've got a page here that's printed off the internet. Okay, and it's just I've copied and pasted things into Word, and it's just a definition of minimal art, a definition of repetitive, um, 
a definition of simplify, a definition of monotonous, okay, and also a thesaurus entry for repetitive. So for repetitive, for example, I've got characterised by or given to unnecessary repetition, boring, dull, repetitive work, okay. Now I would remove the boring and the dull from there because I adore repetitive work, I absolutely love it. So I would change that for um, magnificent, amazing, repetitive work because I, I could sit and do repetitive work for hours, okay. And then the thesaurus entry for repetitive is boring, ceaseless, constant, continual, dull, insistent, monotonous, repeated, uninteresting, verbose. I would also remove a few of those. But things like that inform what I do. I'm a big lover of words. You'll know I always put definitions on my blog. I'm kind of obsessed with words. So, and to be fair, what I put on my blog is restrained. I could define every word I put on there, but I hold myself back. So down here, simplify, to make simple or simpler, to reduce in complexity to reduce to fundamental parts, okay, monotonous, dull and tedious, again, I would remove that, it doesn't apply to me, um, unvarying in pitch or cadence, which I don't know what cadence means, I might have to look that up, unvarying in pitch, yeah, that does appeal to me, so that's, that can stay, I won't cross that one out, so I even rewrite dictionaries to meet my needs creatively, there you go, so and then this page is the last sewing I've done, and you saw this yesterday, it's bound buttonholes that to me aren't very good. I haven't done them for years, I need to practice. And some applique with my silk tissue that does look like velvet, but it isn't. I can assure you it's metallic silk tissue. And then another artist whose work I love. Look her up, Mary Kelly. This is a series she did when her son was born of note taking about the different stages in his day, like 8 a.m. feed, burp small amount of baby vomit etc things like that and down here that's a handprint of a son set in clay with notes about that particular stage in his life so i love her work and i love the way she verbalizes and and displays her thought processes regarding being a mother i like the way she sets those out for exhibition and the work she produces because of that so that's how far I am in this book and that's it at the moment. But I wanted to show you through it. Every page is amazing. I'm not going to go through every page, but just to give you a sense of what's in here. I mean, if I was a child with coloured pencils coming out of my ears, I would sit with this for hours. I would never be any trouble. It's amazing. Look at this. So this, you know, this is anthropology. So if you're in America, go buy yourself one. I can't remember how much it was. I think it probably was quite expensive. Um, I think it was maybe about £15 in English money by the time I'd converted it. And you may think, oh, that's terribly extravagant, Karen. But bear in mind, I've been surrounded by alcohol and gambling for a week and I hadn't bought myself anything apart from a Starbucks coffee. So I thought I deserved it. But I did have a good holiday, don't get me wrong. I mean, I always like to be away with my husband. It doesn't matter where I am, really. Um, so yeah, so this, I mean, it's just a wonderful book. There's so many things here, look, little people. Now you could colour them in, like with dresses on, you could put clothes on them, couldn't you? So that's five-year-old and they're coming out. So yeah, it's just a beautiful book. Roses, I mean, so many pages, I can't go through them all. But what a treasure trove. And I mean, even if I don't use all this book, I could take these pages out and use them as collage and other things, not even the whole page. I could perhaps cut that page in half and use this half in something else, you know, so it's so useful. It's, it's a multitasking book. There's so many things you could do with this. So there, that's it. I hope you like that anyway. I just wanted to talk you through that a little bit and to confirm to you that it is called Doodle Doo.